hey, we want to talk about electronic voting. I think that's that's really important. And we have on the line with us, and I want to welcome her, uh, Pamela Smith. She's the president of a, a website, verifiedvoting.org. Pamela, welcome to the new screensavers. Thank you so much for having me today. Uh, this has become an issue because one of the two presidential candidates has talked started talking about rigged elections. And we've, for years, been hearing about Diebold and other electronic voting systems being notoriously hackable or unreliable. So I thought, well, here we are a week out. Let's talk about it and how much of a problem it is. What is the purpose of VerifiedVoting.org? We work on making sure that elections are run with reliable, verifiable equipment and the necessary processes that go with that equipment. Um, we've made a lot of progress in moving the country towards more verifiable systems over the last decade plus that we've been doing this, uh, but there's still a little bit more to go as we'll talk about. Yeah. Well, we talked earlier this week with uh, the founder of your organization. I know you, I'm sure you know David Dill. He's a professor of computer science at uh, Stanford. And we were very, we were curious about this, this whole issue. So we asked him to talk a little bit about the voting process as it goes on here in the United States. Here's David. I, I think most people in computer security would say that virtually anything that functions can be hacked. I don't know of a system that hasn't been hacked one way or another. The question really gets down to how hard is it and how motivated are the people to hack it? How many votes can you steal? That sort of thing. Um, the situation in the United States is not ideal, but it has been improving. I've been doing this for something like 12 years. And during that time, we've seen uh, paper ballots everywhere. They're often counted electronically, but there are often, there's a random audit process that's implemented in many states where ballots are selected at random and counted by hand just to double check that the machine counts are accurate. So that's not flawless. And with sufficient effort or a sufficiently large team of people, you can imagine stealing an election. But um, it's not very easy. And I think the scenarios that are currently being talked about are not realistic. One of the things we really shouldn't be worrying about is so-called voter fraud, where the idea is that there are masses of fake voters going to the polls or voting multiple times or whatever, because uh, it's very risky for a voter to do that. And it's a very inefficient, labor-intensive way to commit fraud compared to doing it electronically. So that's the concern I'm hearing about in the news the most now, and it's actually not relevant. It's not going to happen. Yeah, I, I, we asked David about uh, the prospects of a rigged election, how, how possible that was. This is what he had to say. Mm -hmm. One of the things that's important to understand about the U.S. is that our election system is extremely fragmented. We don't really have a national election system. We have a collection of 50 state election systems, and most of those states have something like 50 to uh, 70 county election systems that they have to that may all have separate different different kinds of equipment so uh, different systems work differently there are some states that do everything vote by mail people write on paper ballots mail them in to the offices where they're counted electronically on a centralized scanner there are some places that have electronic voting machines where uh, votes are entered on a touch screen that's a good question. I mean, how many electronic voter machines are there? Because I've always paid with a, I mean, voted with a paper ballot. Here in California, we uh, mark a ballot with a pencil yeah. and, and it's electronically counted. In, in most counties, there are a couple of counties that actually do use what we call direct recording electronic voting machines or touch DREs. A, you touch a screen. You, there's three different kinds. There's a push button kind, mm -hmm. believe it or not, where you press a button and if something lights up next to your candidate's name. Yeah. There's also, those are the older ones. There's also touch screens, as you reference. And then there's another kind that has a screen that you see, but the way you move the cursor around on the screen is by turning a rotary dial. Wow. And then you press a select button to uh, activate the choice. Yeah, so, and some of those DREs come with a voter verifiable paper record or paper audit trail that the voter gets to check and see at the time that they vote that their vote was captured the way they intended it. Um, some of them do not have the paper trail. So that's uh, those machines are kind of falling out of favor at this point. Um, they're used in fewer jurisdictions now. Uh, the darkest color on that map you're showing, our verifier map of voting systems across the country, uh, shows states where 
they use exclusively paperless DREs, those uh, Delaware, Georgia, Louisiana, South Carolina, and New Jersey up there. And right. those are the systems that are most at risk for hacking. I would say or, so, or, yes. Yeah. yes. Uh, if you have a paper trail, and I've always heard Bruce Schneier and other security experts say this, you need mm -hmm. to have a paper audit system that you as the voter can audit uh, so that you can be sure that your vote is counted properly. Yeah, that's what gives the election official the evidence right. of your intent. So what we're looking for here is evidence-based elections, not just saying take it on faith that this software is working perfectly, right. but instead have a way to demonstrate that it is. So first you want the voter to say, yes, that's how I voted on an independent record from the software. That gets retained by the election official and they can use it for audits and recounts. And the audit process is the election official's tool for demonstrating demonstrating to the public that indeed the system worked correctly, or if it didn't, to find the error and correct it. That makes sense. So it's not merely to verify it for me. Then they have the paper trail and they can match the electronic vote count with the paper recorded vote count, the one you saw afterwards, yeah. and make sure that those match. And that is another right. way of verifying. And it's really all about confidence in the system, because I think if I understood David correctly, it's not the issue isn't so much... Uh, a voter fraud or be a rigged election in order to to swing an election you'd have to swing millions of votes that would be so difficult over this heterogeneous system that it'd be almost impossible to do undetected it's really mostly just to give people the confidence that the the vote that they went in to cast did actually get cast and I think voters have that right. You yeah. Know, it, it, giving voters confidence, letting them have that confidence that their vote was captured correctly and counted correctly um, means that they'll show up again and do this again. You know, it, 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 it improves participation. If voters think, oh, well, the whole thing's going to be rigged, why should I bother? That's true. That's not going yeah. to help. So it's really important that voters know there are a lot of safeguards. Yes, there are some vulnerabilities, but there are a lot of things being done to improve that and, and protect the vote. So do these machines malfunction and what happens when they do? <laughs> They can indeed malfunction. We've seen some interesting things happen. Uh, sometimes it's an error in programming or an error in ballot programming. Um, we've also seen with the touchscreens, especially now that they're getting older, uh, that sometimes they will lose their calibration. So you'll touch the screen next to candidate A and suddenly candidate B's name lights up which is not what you want to see as a voter uh, on Donald, election day. Donald Trump has already started saying that some of his voters are seeing that happen. Seeing it, yeah. It, it's not that uncommon. Uh, the calibration can be corrected. It's a sim fairly simple process, but it's one that maybe your 72-year-old poll worker uh, hasn't been fully trained right. on how to do or doesn't have the confidence to do. So they usually rely on technicians to come out and take that machine out of service uh, because it is frustrating trying to get your vote to to uh, appear correctly on a machine like that. And then they'll recalibrate it and then they can put it back into service. The challenge though is that you, you don't want long lines developing because equipment is malfunctioning. So in machine jurisdiction, if that's the way that you vote on a machine, you need to have emergency paper ballots on hand so that voters can continue to vote even if equipment breaks down. What's your sense of this election? Have it, uh, These issues have been around for some time. Uh, I remember the Diebold machines, there was a lot of criticism some years ago. It sounds like we've made some progress, that, that, that people are aware of this and are doing what they can in every state to make this more reliable and to uh, encourage the trust of voters. I think that's true. Yeah. I think uh, election officials are the unsung heroes uh, <laughs> of our of our government, and they do an incredibly hard job. Remember that what we do in voting is very time specific. You know, you get ready for the election. If you're not quite ready, you don't get to say, hey, let's add a day. Let's do this on the 9th instead of the 8th. It has to be ready and everything has to work. And so, um, you know, my sense of this election I, I wouldn't say that I'm more worried this time than in past elections. In fact, I would probably say a little bit less because of yeah. what we know about security. I don't know if you've been following, but Department of Homeland Security has made its services available to election jurisdictions if they want to do vulnerability scans or cyber risk assessments. And at first when they offered that, only two, three states took them up on it 
uh, right away, but then it was 11, then it was 20. The last we heard, it's 40 states wow. plus 27 additional counties. That's, That's great. unprecedented, and yeah. I think it's a really good thing. Does this mean we'll never have online voting? Well, online voting seems like a fun thing to do, and it seems like we've it seen online be polls, possible. and they're yeah. it's, not, it's yeah, a little too we easy know about to online polls. Yeah, you might yeah. have a, a reason to think online voting might not be the best idea. Yeah. Look, um, online voting has uh, particular challenges. It's like your paperless voting machines, but then you attach them to a worldwide attack surface. You know, you, you <laughs> have, have, you have uh, issues of malware on the voter's right. own device. You have issues of, um, you know, spoofing. We, we had some researchers demonstrate uh, what would happen if you spoofed an election site on election day right. when Utah did their Republican primary this year. And um, wow. we've seen, you know, actual pilot systems be hacked into and all of the ballots changed. These were encrypted ballots. They were all changed for new encrypted ballots that elected Bender for president. Um, you know, there's just too many issues. And that's leaving out a, a DDoS attack like we saw this right. last week. So there are many kinds of issues that inter Internet voting is so hard to do because of the anonymity that's required of the ballot. If you do shopping online and banking online, those are not necessarily secure, but the fact that the transaction is linked to your identity makes it easier to secure. With voting, it makes it very hard because the ballot is supposed to be secret. So what about the people that want to Snapchat their vote? They're very proud of the candidate. They're yeah, this has been it. an issue lately. Like, you know, right? put it on Instagram, Facebook. Is that illegal? And what, what's your recommendation for people doing that? I would recommend very strongly that they check with their state. There have been challenges to it. It, it is uh, illegal in some states and in other states, they've overturned that illegality and just said, look, it's free speech. The concern we have, it look, the secrecy of the ballot is protected in all 50 states. In the constitution of the state, which is most of them, or in five or six states, it's in statute. And that happened because decades and decades ago, we had massive problems with coercion and I, vote I come to so. you and I say, Megan, I'll give you $5 if you vote uh, my way. But in order to get proof that you voted my way, would you Snapchat that vote? You, right. can, you, you have to be able the, to prove it. You mm -hmm. can see yeah. the problem. Yeah. He didn't really do that. He didn't I didn't, me, by the way. He offered me I gave her a hundred. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. You say you don't sell your vote that cheap. <laughs> yeah, really. No kidding. <laughs> Well, this is, it's encouraging, uh, you know, I think it's really important and you kind of said the, mo the thing that is most important is to reassure people their, their vote counts and it will be counted properly and so that they will be encouraged to vote. That's ultimately the most important thing is to get everybody to participate. Um, That's right. If you I mean, want the one way to be, one way to be sure your vote won't count is not to show up. So go Guaranteed. <laughs> Verifiedvoting.org. You're nonpartisan. Yes. And you can find out about your state, uh, how it works. You can get the resources that will help you understand. Um, and uh, you guys are doing great work in getting the word out and helping states do a better job. And, I, and I'm actually very encouraged. I think we've made, I was worried a few years ago. I think we've made some real strides uh, in yeah. this direction, yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. Pamela Smith is the president of verifiedvoting.org. And we also talked to David Dill who's a professor of computer science at Stanford. David's gonna join us on Monday for a longer conversation about this Great. Uh, on triangulation. I'm very excited. We also, uh, his colleague Ron Rivest, who everybody will know uh, as one of the creators of RSA, I'm hoping we can mm -hmm. get him as well, but I know Ron is very involved in this uh, as well. It's a very important yes. issue. Yeah, thank you so much, mm -hmm. Pamela. Thanks, Pam. Thank you very much. Great stuff, right. huh? Yeah, I'm encouraged. I am too. Yeah, you want it, you want it, you want the sense that uh, Whatever the vote results are, that they're accurate and mm -hmm. everybody gets uh, a tally.